Dice LA rebrands itself to Ripple Effect, a change in the studio that was a long time coming. Studio managers talk about why this change happened and what it means for the future. The International, one of the biggest Dota 2 tournaments, is back on in a new home. Cyberpunk 2077 is confusing us yet again, and this is The Daily Reset. Good morning gamers, and welcome to The Daily Reset, brought to you by The Emergent Gamer. Subscribe and tune in every morning to get all the biggest news stories as you start your day. We're on all major podcast platforms, and we also upload our shows to our YouTube channel if you like to listen there. I'm Trip Zero, and this is your news for July 8th, 2021. DICE LA, the EA-owned support studio that has done developmental work on all the Battlefield titles since Battlefield 4, has announced a rebrand for itself, including hinting at upcoming projects in development. Now known as Ripple Effect, the studio will remain staffed as is and headed by current general manager Christian Grass, with Vince Zampella co-managing. Zampella is also known for founding Respawn Entertainment, which is responsible for many EA favorites, including the Titanfall series and the Battle Royale hit Apex Legends. Grass was promoted to general manager of DICE LA in 2017. Zampella will still be overseeing Respawn as well, making him responsible for two large EA studios. Ripple Effect posted a statement to their site blog indicating that their growth and desire to excel in the gaming space led them to make this change. Christian Grass is quoted in the post explaining why this was necessary. He says, We're so proud of our work as DICE LA and the DICE team will forever be a part of our DNA, but over the past eight years, we've developed our own culture and our own way of doing things. Grass continues, We are excited to look towards the future, expand the team, and establish our own identity. This change was a long time coming, as Zampella did an interview with the Los Angeles Times in January of 2020 when he was put in charge of the then DICE support studio. In that interview, he mentions plans to expand and launch an as-of-yet-announced game, something that Ripple Effect directly mentions in their own announcement. In that interview, Zampella says, We will probably rebrand. We want to give it a new image. We want people to say, This is a destination you can go and make new content. I think they've kind of gotten the branding that they are the support studio for DICE Stockholm. I think rebranding is important for showing people, hey, come work here, we're going to do some amazing things. Ripple Effect is currently finishing work on Battlefield 2042. They're responsible for one of the game's yet unrevealed multiplayer modes. The project has only been described so far by the DICE main studio as a love letter to Battlefield fans, and Ripple Effect calls it player inspired. After more than a year of delays due to COVID-19, along with trouble with the planned hosting country, Dota 2's The International Tournament finally has a home for 2021 and will be held in Bucharest, Romania, starting on October 7th. Dota 2 is a MOBA, which stands for Mobile Online Battle Arena, and is a more action-oriented real-time strategy style of game where two players each control an army and fight for control of a board ultimately ending when one player destroys the opposing player's stronghold at the opposite end of that board. Dota 2 is one of the most widely played games in the world, and the International is one of the most popular esports championships in the world. Started in 2015 by the game's developer Valve, the event was included in their wider Dota Major Championship series, and it drew massive interest as the initial prize pool back then was $1.6 million, with $1 million alone for the champion. The total prize pool for this year's The International 10 has grown to over $40 million. On June 21st, Valve released a statement about the status of the event for this year. 
and they indicated that they'd been working with Sweden to host in Stockholm since 2019 and were assured by the country that there would be no issues with the event logistics as the event would qualify for the same exemptions that other elite sporting events qualify for when it comes to international travel for the team and their staff. Valve was then told that the Swedish Sports Federation had voted to not accept esports into the Sports Federation. This immediately meant that no one requesting a travel visa into Sweden for TI-10 would be granted one, meaning allowances into the country would be decided by the individual agents at the border crossing. With uncertain travel situations and denied an appeal submission to Sweden's Minister of the Interior, Valve announced they would begin searching for an alternate country to host the event. Romania stepped up to host, and Valve announced yesterday that TI-10 will take place in Romania's largest stadium, the 55,000-seat Arena Nationale. The saga of Cyberpunk 2077 continues, with a wave of advertisements being seen all over social media starting today that simply show clips from the game with the words, Biggest Update Yet and More to Come. Forbes gaming writer Paul Tassi even noted some tweets from people on July 3rd who saw similar ads with the language, available now for the update. Besides saying biggest update yet, there is absolutely nothing detailing any large update in these advertisements. And while Cyberpunk has been slowly patching its game to fix issues that have plagued it since its rushed launch in December of 2020, these are incremental updates and could hardly be qualified as large updates to the game. This follows along with developer CDPR's messaging about the game, where they are telling players non-stop how committed they are to fixing and improving the game, but deliver roadmaps and statistics with no clarity or actionable information. Recently, they released a chart indicating a lower crash rate of their game and detailing that decline over a few months, but it does not indicate what they define as a crash, what consoles were included in this report, or even any numbers on the chart to compare to anything. It was just a squiggly yellow line moving downward. CDPR has promised bug fixes and improvements, and once the game reaches another as yet undefined benchmark of stability and functionality, they promise DLC content to grow the game. As of now, the game has been granted permission to be sold again on the PlayStation Store, as it was removed soon after launch due to the game's performance on the PlayStation 4. That's going to be it for Thursday, July 8th, 2021. Subscribe on your favorite podcast service to get up to speed in the gaming world every morning with me, your host, Trip Zero. And be sure to find and listen to our main show, The Emergent Gamer Podcast, live on twitch.tv slash emergent underscore gamer on Wednesday nights, and then on podcast services the next day. Get the news with me and hear the in-depth discussion with the rest of us. I'll see you tomorrow.